This is the fifth estate winning headlines, your media police post. In this segment, we summarize some of the headlines that you might have missed this morning. But we also take a look at the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 17th of July, 2019, and I am 2J. I am JM. And I am GK. And in case you missed the headlines today, here they are. Yes. So in the standard, why civil servants now want to quit <laughs> NHIF <laughs> scheme. What a mouthful. Mm -hmm. The standard editor is asleep. <laughs> and the star, Matiangi takes charge of weekly cabinet meetings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very powerful. Uh, Daily Nation, exposed. Agent in Jubilee 2017 election elections team. Mm. Yeah, also kind of a mouthful. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so where do we begin? Yeah, I say let's standard. Start. Yes, with the sure. standard. And I think just like we did yesterday, we mm -hmm. want to call out the standard editor. I think he's somewhere <laughs> far away <laughs> asleep yeah. on the job. So today, again, we're going to suggest a new headline. Rather than why civil <coughs> servants now want to quit NHIF scheme, which is a mouthful and also sounds terrible, we're going to suggest this instead. 4.2 billion, full colon, civil service quitting NHIF, I think that's a more yeah. strong yeah. Absolutely. headline. Maybe you should Th take up his job. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I'm free. Let's but so before <laughs> so we get there, we have a three-part <laughs> criteria that we use to break down the headlines. Mm -hmm. We ask ourselves, is it topical or is it speculative? Is it repetitive or is it groundbreaking? And is it thoughtful or just plain lazy? lazy. This is the definition mm -hmm. of yeah. just plain lazy. Yep. I mean, it's this is it. but it is topical. It is topical, that's very true. That, you know, yeah. they're trying to review what's going on with the scheme, why yeah. it isn't and I working. Think, JM, you're making the point that instead of having all the civil servants yeah, under yeah, yeah. one Absolutely. scheme. Th this yeah. is the danger of monopolizing this yeah. whole situation, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Rather than having civil servants under one, under one. scheme, uh, NHIF, they should be allowed to open accounts with you know different insurance yeah. uh, companies. Yeah. Although then, if civil servants are going to private sector, I mean, does it fare well for NHF, which is supposed to be yeah, the, for the, you know, public. the state yeah. cover? You mm, know, so. Yeah, I know. So I still think we're, we're tossing we the toss, story, right? We toss that. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, in the star, <coughs> Matiangi takes charge of weekly cabinet meetings. Mm. Yes. Right off the bat, the first thing I say, if you delegate the thing you're supposed to do, <laughs> what are you going to be doing then? Yeah. Like, oh. what's the plan? So I think oh. maybe to clarify, yeah. the role... Okay, one of the roles that the president is to assume <coughs> is hosting those weekly cabinet meetings. Yeah, and correct. the idea is to get gauge updates of what's going on with his agenda, what's mm. going on, you yeah. know, with the country in general, and they're supposed to update him and, and, and see whether things are on track. Yeah. But so if you delegate this, yeah. I mean, what are you so busy doing? What you're supposed to be busy doing is sitting down with people who <laughs> philosophize, no, I sitting don't down that. with your kitchen cabinet, <laughs> and talking very high level things about where the country is headed where to take the country. He's Talk about, he, he should be doing politics, actually. The, but the, he also told us he doesn't want to do politics. Remember, <laughs> he said he wants to focus on development. If you That's ignore true. politics, development will not happen. I'm with you there. It won't. But if you address politics, development happens. So on good authority, we know that he's delegated this meeting mm. and he's also not doing politics. Yeah. yeah okay. However, <laughs> I'm happy that the person he delegated it to is Matiangi. If okay. he was to run for president tomorrow, I, for one, would vote for him instantly. My worry is, and the thing that it brings me back to, is uh, Robert Greene's uh, 48 Laws of Power mm -hmm. about outshining your master. So well, what do you mm. do if your master is the one who has told you to take but on that job? But this man will become the fall of the favorite. Things maybe are that's gonna be scheme, happening actually. to him. That maybe it is. He's yeah. being fattened up so that when the so ball drops, he can very easily Precisely. point. Precisely. Yeah. He becomes a scapegoat. Yeah, I would say go wrong. if Big Four is the president's thing, then he needs to keep the, his eye on the ball. And yeah. those meetings, I think, for me, are, are crucial. That's mm. true. And and for <laughs> and you don't want to ignore your troops for too long. That's mm -hmm. the other thing. Yeah. So. I say let's put in the parking bay while parking we look bay. at the Daily Nation. Daily right. Nation. So, exposed agent <coughs> in Jubilee 2017 election team. Mm. Um, and so the context of this is that uh, Cambridge Analytica has been going through um, a few scandals yeah. due to breach of personal data mm -hmm. and their use of... Um, Psychological warfare, I would yeah. call it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so this lady was hired by the, the Jubilee team yeah. to write mm -hmm. speeches, but mm -hmm. as part of a wider team called SCL. Yeah, so she was hired. She works for SCL, which yeah. is the parent company of Cambridge Analytica, which was hired, which was contracted by Jubilee yes. to do some stuff. We don't mm -hmm. know yeah. what. Yeah. So then she was hired by Cambridge Analytica yeah. to write speeches and for train 3. communication. Three point eight million shillings. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for six hundred million shillings in total. In 
in total, yeah. which right. is quite a large amount. There's it's, quite a it's, bit. It's, it's sad, it's shameful actually that uh, such yeah. work should have been contracted to a Mozongo firm. You That's know, true. For a fraction of a cost. This would have been done by people over here. Yeah, they're plenty of people are more knowledgeable on the context and so on and so forth. Yeah. But just on Cambridge Analytica, yeah. uh, Roger Stone, one of uh, you know one of the greatest political operatives out there, He's now in told jail. us, told us, losers. <laughs> don't legislate and politics as Machiavelli also told us yeah. is amoral yeah. so people really will go to any lengths to, mm -hmm. win, an to win an election yeah. 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 and, uh, and However, that's what they're good at and that demand will always be there I will say that there's something about the story that just doesn't sit well with me um, there is a documentary coming out next week mm -hmm. on Netflix that yeah. is going to delve into this Cambridge Analytica scandal. It touches on the US elections, touches on its Brexit. impact in Kenya, Brexit. And I think it's a bit timely that a young, beautiful, impressionable woman has become <coughs> the scapegoat at the same time that a very anticipated documentary is about to come out. That's just my it's perfect timing. Two cents. It is perfect timing. Perfect timing. So okay. it's been choreographed. But what one thing Cambridge Analytica understood is that politics is about perception. Yeah. Um, and mm. I think that's one thing we can take away from mm -hmm. what yeah. they did so well. All of yeah. you people yeah. with your Huduma numbers. <laughs> oh yes. No one. <laughs> what is happening? No one for data. You. That's right. <laughs> also, we're living in a digital era. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. We've it's shared true. a lot of information with all these entities, people yeah. like Facebook and so on and so forth. Exactly. Mm. So what do you expect? Of course they're going to use that information either against you or they're going to leverage on yeah. it let to me, make money. Let me ask you people who signed up for Huduma Number, the two of you. Yes. Mm. Where's your Huduma Number? It's coming. <laughs> they're well, they're they're that, that little receipt slip they, they are, gave you. They did, it have a, Listen, did it have a serial no. number? Now that Uhuru Kenyatta has delegated those meetings, now he has time. Uh, uh, <laughs> he's focusing on the number. number. Yes. All right, great. So if we look at these two, I think we've got a winning headline Daily Nation, because it's lifting the veil of ignorance, we're anticipating Anticipating a bombshell next week, possibly yeah. yes. with Cambridge Analytica and its role in the Kenyan election. Agreed. Fantastic. So Daily Nation gives up. Oh, yeah. really headline. Headline. And now onto our political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Um, we also have a three-part criteria that mm -hmm. we use. We ask ourselves: Is it humorous or is it dry? Um, is it s sarcastic or is it pessimistic? And is it effective or just plain lazy? Yeah. Shall we start with Gado? Mm. Our Tanzanian. I think this is Gado's, oh, maybe his third Trump related cartoon. And naked Trump at that. Yeah. So uh, let, me, let me describe there. it. So you have uh, a naked Trump, hairy, a very rotund, hairy, hairy <laughs> yeah, knock kneed <laughs> Trump. And he's wearing oh. a crown and he's got um, um, his middle finger up, but it's covered. Thank you. Um, well, thank you very much, yes. Gado. <laughs> yeah, for giving us that. He has a long tie. Um, and he's holding a bottle written racism, mm -hmm. and there's one mm. on the floor written misogyny. misogyny. Yeah, and it's written the neo ugly American. I don't yeah. even think we should waste our time discussing this cartoon. I yeah. think this is we're, we're not in America. Their politics is not our politics. I mm. agree. Yeah, I think <laughs> I can feel the I mood. I agree. To <laughs> <be> <laughs> <honest>. <laughs> And then in the nation, we have Dula mm. and the <coughs> politics of maize, which we had discussed earlier this week um, yeah. and probably had foreseen it would be an mm. issue. So there's a hat written the politics of maize. The hat is red. Mm -hmm. On this hat is Baba as a chicken. <laughs> as a cock, as a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and under the hat is some, some very maize. yummy looking yellow maize. But yeah. it's a trap. But it's a trap. And there's someone who's holding it and can pull um, the hat at any time to cover yeah. up the maze. So I think we all agreed I before that this was a bit of a hard cartoon to analyze. Had many layers. Very but many Prof layers. very graciously dissected and explained the cartoon to us, so we're going to now repeat what he has told us. <laughs> so <laughs> I think what um, Dula is trying to tell us is that the chicken is supposed to be enticed by the maze. And mm. so in this circumstance, Baba Man should have been caught in this trap, the politics of maze, or rather he should be the one speaking out about it. But because of handshake, he has withdrawn himself from that yeah. situation. Unfortunately. Although he did slightly point out, you know, that uh, Kionjuri should not be offering that maize be imported. Yeah. He is saying that the local farmers have enough to satisfy Kenyan demand. Mm. But I think there'll be a, a conversation back and forth yes. about this. I, yeah. I didn't get this cartoon. Yeah, can we <laughs> toss it? <laughs> Make my headache. Um, Finally, ozone. Ozone. Right. There's a, let me describe it. There's a lady, um, I guess his virgin, version of the average Kenyan, mm. and uh, it says, at this rate, we will have ingested all the elements of the periodic table. Mm. And um, below, you can see newspapers with lead in Sukuma Wiki, 
mercury and sugar and uh, poisoned meat and sodium, sodium sulfate. sulfate. Yeah. yeah. I actually think this was quite witty now that I look at it again, you know? Yeah. Interesting, all the elements of the periodic table. Mm. Uh, and, and all these things we have been told by the government at some point mm. have been, you know, in our food, yeah. right? They have told us we had mercury and sugar. Mm. Uh, we are also now being told that we have some sorts of, some sorts of sulfites in our meat. We also know we have nitrates uh, that are synthetic in our fertilizer. Mm. We've got uh, uh, anti-weed uh, killers. Yeah, causing cancer. That yeah. Are still but don't you find this such a pessimistic right? cartoon? But it, it is, and and I think for good reason because who has failed us? Government mm. has failed us on this one. Yeah. Kebs ought to be, you know, coming in and. Yeah. And on that note, I would agree because we keep having these scandals, but no resolution. No resolution. But, but exactly. What happened with the mercury scandal? No resolution. Do we know? No closure. Mm. Yeah. And we don't even get any reassurance yeah. that this won't happen in the future. That's yeah. true. So I guess we call our government. So and that's what he's, yeah. he's inviting us to do. So is this our winning cartoon? No. <laughs> I think it should be a winning cartoon, but the mood of the flow is... I think it's is, too uh, pessimistic to be a winning cartoon, and I think... <laughs> and also, would. he hasn't given um, credit to actually the video that had made fun of this. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we do call Ozonat for not giving give credit. credit. I think maybe we, give, we go back into the vault, yeah. and we assign the winning cartoon, uh -huh. which is the reigning cartoon of the year, which actually came from Dula. Yeah. Uh, Oscar Sudi in a dress yes. waiting to receive yes. the yes. president. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, really, let's go back to that. That is our <laughs> reigning cartoon of the year. All right. There you go. <laughs> <coughs> and now over to our final thought. Mm. And now our final thought comes from um, a chapter in a book which is entitled Hitting Budapest by No Violet Bulawayo and she comes from, she refers to herself as an expatriate Zimbabwean but she's mm. from Zimbabwe. Mm. So this story comes from the first chapter of her debut novel entitled We Need New Names. So this first chapter uh, was presented to the Boston Review and actually won the 2011 Kane Prize for African Writing. So this is continuing in the series. Mm. So the book is a coming-of-age story of a young girl called Darling as a 10-year-old um, Zimbabwean. And that's where this first chapter comes from. And we trace the rest of her life in the book, which I would invite you to read on. Mm -hmm. But in this specific chapter, it follows a group of preteens living in tin shacks in Zimbabwe after their homes have been demolished by um, Mugabe's paramilitary police. So that's in the aftermath of that. So there are no schools, there are no hospitals, there's nothing for them to do. They just kind of exist. Mm. Um, so No Violet gives a child's eye view of a world where there is talk of elections and democracy, but where chaos and degradation become an everyday reality. So this is a story that I would consider to just be about normality. Mm. The story isn't particularly eventful. Uh, it's not a story where we're encouraged to watch events, but in which we are shown a spectacle of non-events. It's only at the end of the story where mm. there's a this little bit event, of drama. Yeah. Yeah. So nothing is really happening. Uh, and nothing is at stake because that's just the point. Nothing um, In normal life, nothing is to be lost or to be gained. Mm. And you can contrast that with when they go to Budapest, this yeah. uptown part of Zimbabwe. So they go to Budapest and they see the impossibility of their lives. And it represents a place where they can be real people. So it's something that they aspire for. And in the book, Darling says, if I lived in Budapest, I would wash my whole body every day and comb my hair nicely to show I was a real person living in a real place. Mm. Mm. So you contrast their existence in this place, in this slum that they ironically call Called paradise, paradise. Yeah. and Budapest, where in paradise, there's nothing going on. They have yeah. nothing to live for. Mm. And in the book, you have the girl, um, Chipo, Chipo. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who is pregnant yeah. at the age of 11. Exactly. Yeah. So in this one chapter, this is not the day where Chipo gets raped, which is mm. what we, the author yeah. alludes to. But you're left to deduce yeah. Something yeah, bad something has happened, happened because yeah. she no longer speaks. Yes. And so they speak on her behalf. And you, you get yeah. the idea that a trauma, traumatic event has, has happened. happened yeah. So in this one day, it's 24 hours that this chapter covers. Mm. In this day, it's not the day that Chipo gets raped. It's not mm. the day that she gave birth. It's just a day in the middle of their lives where a 10-year-old being pregnant mm. is part of their everyday yeah, reality. It's a normal but, yeah. but, but it was an interesting day because yeah. what, yes, and it was, what, yeah. these, what these kids got up to, they crossed over from paradise into mm -hmm. the place called Budapest. Mm -hmm. And in Budapest, then, they, you know, it's a leafy neighborhood, mm -hmm. very beautiful homes, <coughs> and they're going in search of food, yeah. but guavas, in particular yeah. in search of guavas, guavas right? Yeah. And that took me down memory lane. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, <laughs> but, you know, yeah, I yeah. often in places like South Sea and Buruburu, would we would go for, yeah. climbing trees yeah. during guava season, 
and you know, uh, just knock those things down. Eat yeah. them. Yeah. So that that was an exciting yeah. kind of uh, you know period, journey yeah. period, uh, even for me to reminisce on. Yeah. Uh, but but the other thing is her interaction with uh, you know the, the the lady whom they yeah. met mm -hmm. uh, over at Budapest. Who you know is so different from them. It's so different yeah, from them, yeah, right? Yeah. And and that reminded me of and you know she's different. She comes from a different world. Mm -hmm. She's preppy. She uh, you know uh, is exposed to a lot of the finer things mm -hmm. in life. Yeah, and she's eating something that they, they don't all understand. are looking yeah. at them. They're like, and what they're is like, this you're wow, eating? Yeah. And, and then she throws it away, and, and they like, all Why? swallow it. <laughs> And they're in total awe. They're in total awe of her. They're salivating yeah. over her food exactly. as, as she swallows. They yeah. also swallow yeah. in turn. And they can't understand how she would throw a thing. They yeah. don't understand that kind of the wastefulness. Yeah. Yeah. The wastefulness. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, and so for me, I, I think that made me realize that for some of us who are a little bit more privileged mm. than others, particularly, mm. you know, children, for instance, in the village, mm. you know, when, when you go out there and you're driving past and they're waving at you saying yeah. hi, they want to reach out, interact, interact yeah. with yeah. you. They want to, you know, yeah. see where you're coming from, and that got me to realize that maybe I should do a bit more. You should do a bit mm. more for to, sure. Yeah, you know, to interact and yeah. And I think paradise, help them paradise, and Budapest illustrate a duality, an economic duality that happens in a lot of African countries. Yeah, mm. that you have a very high residential area, very posh area like Runda, and then right next to it you have Gidawaro. Yeah. You have a slum, and these people, you know, they feed into Runda every day, and they see your wealth and your, you know, your high gates. Mm. Um, so that story was very stark. But the thing that No Violet uses very powerfully mm. is these comical sort of instances yeah. in the story. So yeah. we were very laughing comical. a lot of the time reading the story, mm -hmm. but they were also saying something so deep. Yeah. You know, there were there were themes of, of, of hopelessness, of mm -hmm. hunger, of poverty, poverty, of a rape that might have happened, yeah. or incest um, mm -hmm. in that case. Um, so for me, it was very, the children formed a collective character. They really told mm. us this, this story yeah. in, yeah. in very short pages. I really mm. encourage everyone to read it's this an story. An exceptional it's, it's an writer. 18 page yeah. chapter yeah. Yeah. yeah and also just the indignity of having to there's a part in the story where they go to use the bathroom in the cemetery, yeah, the mm -hmm. cemetery. and 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 it reminded me of how often you know there's we think of flying toilets in kibera or mm. other areas people just that access to something so you know that that gives you indignity that yeah. you can't use a bathroom yeah. um, mm. in a normal mm. way. Yeah. Um, and it's in this scene where they see a body hanging, yes, hanging. a person who's committed and suicide. So, this is the, yeah. so there's an interaction with that lady who they see as clean, and then the second event is is this body hanging. Mm -hmm. mm. And the kids' reaction is what really touched me. Yeah. That when they saw her shoes, what they thought about was how, how can we sell these shoes, shoes for loaves of bread? Precisely. And poverty in that way was engineering that. that hunger was yeah. engineering how they thought. How they and the reason why they I think about these other things. The reason why I call this chapter about normality and just about the yeah. normalness of life yeah. is that the chapter started yeah. in the way that it ended. Yeah. It started with them searching for Something food. Something very normal. And it ends with them searching so for food. food. Everything that happened in between was just exactly. like a, a little addition in life, exactly. but at the end of the day, the what they needed was food. Was They're food. going to take the, the shoes of a dead woman yeah. in order yeah. to get food. They're going to go food. rob the wealthy yeah. in order to get food. Yeah. That's yeah. when I actually appreciated mm. how stark, how yeah. real the yeah. poverty was yeah. 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 when yeah. I read that part. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Very sad. Um, and so for me, I would say that this story shows us the effects of poverty and its dehumanizing effects. Mm. Um, and perhaps stories like this will shed light on those who choose to turn a blind eye on the gap between rich and poor. Mm. And it shows us that each and every one of us has a role in how society can be shaped. Yeah. Um, and so it's upon us to really see those people, see those people you pass every day, yeah. Yeah. those people who are looking through your trash um, as you leave your house. Yeah. They're humans too. Um, they're they're humans like too. And I think if every one of us takes on that role, I think we have a lot to offer the world yeah right yeah. absolutely so on a day where we had a winning headline mm -hmm. from the daily nation yes. no winning cartoon but we had the, the winning the winning cartoon yeah yay <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see you tomorrow we hope you have a nice evening